So this video is about simulating folding patterns in Vellum. This is a topic that has already been explored in great detail and in multiple videos and live streams by Yunichiro Horikawa. What I want to add to it with this video here is a method that is really simple to set up. It's literally just six lines of X and that works in a very similar way of folding in real life with folding patterns. So inside an empty scene, let's drop down a geo folder. Let's dive inside and I first of all want to load in a pattern that I built earlier using a file node and you can find also this pattern and the way it was built inside the scene files. And this is the tiled and shifted water bomb base, which I think is the correct name for this origami pattern. No, this is just a pattern that I modeled using SOPs and now I want to find a general way of moving this pattern into vellum and have it fold into the right shape automatically. And the way I want to do this is using edge groups. Like with a paper pattern or a folding pattern, I want to specify two edge groups, one for all my upfolds and one for all my downfolds. And later vellum should simply look at these groups and then fold or bend all the right constraints into the right direction. So first of all, let's create our edge groups. For this pattern, this is fairly simple because all the diagonal lines will be upfolds and all the horizontal or vertical lines will be downfolds. So for this, let's simply use a group node. Wire this in. Let's set the group type to edges. Let's call this, for example, fold up. And to automatically select the right edges, I want to disable the general selection, move down to include by edges, enable a minimum and maximum edge length. And for a minimum, I want to have a value of 0.11 and for a maximum, a value of 0.19. And this should only select our diagonal lines. Let's create our next group. For this, I can use a group combine. I simply want the inverse of my fold up. Let's call this new group fold underscore down. And this should be equal all but my fold up group. And this is my other edge group for folding. Now we have our data on our mesh. Now let's take a look at how we can feed this to Vellum. For this, first of all, we need a Vellum constraint node. So let's search for Vellum constraints and wire this node down. Of course, we first of all want a bend across triangles constraint. We will add a few other constraints later, but for now, this is the main one we care about. And let's take a look at the output and especially at the constraints output. Let's drop down a null. Let's bring up the info panel and we see a problem here. We have still a fold down and fold up group, but they both have zero entries. So all our group data on this GeoStream is lost. If you take a look at our main GeoStream right here, here we still have our groups. So what we need to do in the end is sort of transfer our groups from this GeoStream to this GeoStream and in a way that for each edge, in our main groups, we select the right band constraint, which is a constraint that moves over the selected edge. How can we do this inside Vellum? Well, first of all, this is a very complex mesh, so we should make this a bit simpler. I will load in another file for this. Again, if you want to know how this was constructed, you can take a look at the scene files, and this is my band constraint demo.bgo file. And what this simply is, is two triangles. So the simplest mesh possible to create a band constraint on. Let's wire this in. Let's take a look again at our band constraints. And as we can see, we just have a single band constraint constructed here. We have just one primitive and this primitive consists of four points. And these four points are constructed in a very specific way. So let's take a look at this. To get a better idea on how this was constructed, we first have to enable our point indices and then we also should sort a point indices by the vertex order on this primitive. So in here, let's just write in a sort node and let's choose by vertex order. And here we can see how this is constructed. And for now, let's also ghost our main geo so we can get a better idea. So for each band constraint, we're starting out here at the top of this triangle here, the point, the corner that is opposite to a bending edge. Then from this corner, we move down to the corner of a second triangle that is also opposite to a bending edge. And then from there on, we move to one of those points on a bending edge and then to the next point. 
So the last two points of our band constraint are the points that are on our folding edge. So this is quite good news for us because what we need to do to transfer our groups from this geostream to this geostream is simply check for each constraint on this geostream if the last two points on this constraint happen to lie on an edge that is in one of our groups. And if it is in one of our groups, then this group should also be on our constraint right here. Also, we need to take a look at how we can control the angle on this constraint, and this is quite simple. We can go into the Geo spreadsheet, we move to the primitive section, and here we can simply see that the rest length is set to our angle of our faces in degrees. So this is simply the value that we later want to adjust in our solver to bend our band constraints one or the other way. So with this research done, let's finally implement this. So first of all, let's wire in again our main geometry. We can get rid of these two nodes right here and also the demo file here. And let's bring in a primitive wrangle where we want to write a code to transfer our groups. Our constraint geometry goes into the first input, our main geometry goes into the second input. And now let's enlarge this window and let's write our very few lines of x. First of all, I want to get access to all the points that are in the band constraint that I'm processing up here. So for this, let's first of all create an empty array called pts. And this is an integer array. And this should be equal to a function called primpoints, which gives us the points inside a primitive. And this will be on a geostream zero and the points of our current primnum, the constraint that we're currently processing. And then our second line of code here, we first of all want to check if the last two entries of this array are in our point group on our first geostream right here, or the second geostream inside this primitive wrangle. So for this, let's write an if clause, and we want to check if the function in edge group returns true if we're checking on our second geostream, in our fold up group. And if this works for the last two entries of our array, so PTS2 and PTS3, like this. And if this is the case, I want to set this point group also on my primitive. So I add group underscore fold underscore up should be equal to one, like this. And this is actually all we need to write in here. To make this a bit more visible, we can also go into the bindings tab. Let's enlarge our window in here. And in the output selection group, we can put in the name of our group, so fold up. And now we can see we have our first set of constraints selected here. Let's do the same for our fold down group. This will be the same as our fold up group. So let's just simply duplicate this. And all we need to do here is change up the group name. So like this, and now we're selecting our second set of band constraints. Let's take a look at the settings on our volume constraints node. I first of all want to set the stiffness of my band constraints obviously a lot higher. So let's add another value of 10. And right now this would be a very, very jittery simulation. So I want to up the damping ratio all the way up to one to make this a lot more smooth. Next, of course, we need also some distance constraints. So let's create those, add in another well, constraints node. Let's fire in our main geometry, our new constraint geometry like this, and also maybe our collision object if we have any. And in here, everything is left at default. And finally, if we want a volume solver, let's wire this in. And on a volume solver, since we're using stiff band constraints, I want to up the constraint iterations a bit. So let's make this 300. I also want to add a ground position and I want to lower this a tiny bit, minus 0 0.01. And under the forces tab, I also want a tiny bit of velocity damping, so a value of 0 0.1 in here as well. Now, if we're simulating right now, we should see that nothing happens. This is because we are not animating our band constraints rest length yet. So let's do just that. For this, let's jump into our volume solver. Let's create our last two lines of X. Let's first of all drop down a geometry wrangle. On this wrangle, we want to process our fold underscore up group. This should be a primitive group. And also under the data bindings, we want to work not on our main geometry, but our constraint geometry like this. And inside our code field, we simply want to set our f at rest length to a value that I want to set just with a simple slider like this. And let's call this slider, for example, angle. 
Let's create our slider down here by hitting this button. Let's also set our update mode to manual, to not sim every frame if we jump in our timeline. And let's simply start at an angle of zero. Let's add a keyframe here. And let's maybe move to frame 120 like this. And let's animate this to a value of 90 like this. Let's do the exact same thing for our fold down group. So let's just duplicate this change the group name to fold down and let's simply set the rest length to minus our angle that we are set up here. And also to keep jitter again down for this setup, I want to run those two wrangles only until we stop animating them. So for this, let's use an enable solver and in here set the enable condition to $f or current frame being smaller than 120 like this. And now if we did everything correctly, we can jump back out, we can jump to frame one, we can set our update mode back to auto. And now let's run our simulation and let's see what happens. And yes, our geometry is folding up like we specified with a folding pattern. So this is pretty much all I have to tell you today. This is how you can simulate folding patterns in Houdini. In these scene files, you can also find a few examples for other patterns that you can try out and also some ways of creating nice and rounded edges on those patterns for rendering. But until next time, it's cheers and goodbye.